I'm Master Sergeant Mike Andriaco, stationed at Scott Air Force Base, Illinois. I love the fact that bladesmithing brings a balance to my life. This is me living my dream, but in front of <laughs> in front of a real big audience. I'm Tech Sergeant Matthew Prentice, currently in the United States Air Force, stationed out at Grand Forks Air Force Base. What got me into bladesmithing was actually the show Forge and Fire, and I uh, kind of told my wife, hey, you know, I want to do that, and she was like, yeah, whatever, you're not going to do that. I'm retired Chief Master Sergeant Joe Stickle. Well, I've got over 26 years of military service. I've been promising my wife a Hawaii trip. I never did take her on a honeymoon, so when I win this $50,000, there's gonna be a trip in it for my wife, absolutely. Today in our first round of competition, we'll be making blades inspired by history, and today, you, Airmen, will be making this blade. In honor of one of the Air Force's most strategic campaigns, you will be forging a bolo after Operation Bolo. This is a Filipino farming tool that was also used for warfare. Let's talk a little bit about steel. Today, I'd like you to make a San Mai blade using mild steel harvested from the main rotor nuts from helicopters and one inch round stock W1 steel. Good luck, bladesmiths. Your time starts now. My game plan is I need to get that W1 drawn out into a usable billet, and then I need to figure out how I'm gonna work with this retention nut. The oxygen settling torch is one of those tools when I was a kid growing up working with my dad. That was one of the tools that I was actually able to start using at a fairly young age. It looks like Joe's done a really good job of uh, separating his steels over there. The angle grinder's not working the way I was expecting it to, so maybe I can try something else. I'm thinking, what about some kind of hot cut tool? And oh my gosh, it's working just like I wanted it to. So I decided to go to the forge to heat this retention nut and see if I can hammer it off. And that's not working out for me. I finally decide to, instead of using the big billet, take it over to the chop saw and cut off the small pieces out. Wow, it's got a little, a very little piece. It's all you need. I got my W1 pretty much drawn out faster than I've ever done it. My goal at this point is to get them all tack welded together, stacked up, and ready to go in the forge. Yes. I haven't made a blade shape like this. The example has a very clear definition between where the blade ends and the handle starts. I need to bring that, that bulbous tip. So I'm just going to get it as close as possible. Joe is out ahead of the pack. I mean, he just has been doing really good, smart work. So there he goes, Joe's in the quint. I got a good straight blade. I set my first weld. It takes, flux a little more, throw it back, just for an insurance policy. So now, for the first time in the competition, I start trying to shape my blade. I'm feeling pretty good about the shape that I'm getting, so this is it. I need to get this thing in the quench. There's a quench from Mike with a really, really hot blade, man. That thing was the temperature of the sun. It had. <laughs> and with that amount of heat, I'd be really surprised if it didn't warm. Watch the sand my edges. This will quench. So I go in for my quench, I pull my blade out, I realize that the blade didn't fully harden. Ah, so with four minutes on the clock, I go back in for a second quench. Ah, Let's drop that in there. Matt's blade is laying in the bottom of his oil drum over there. I mean, he's quenched it. I put my finger in the oil. The oil's hot. Didn't really want to put my arm in there. Five, four, three, two, one. Blazemith, shut down your machines, drop your tools. This first round of competition is over. All right, Bladesmiths, congratulations. You've made it into the second round of this competition. Now that your blades have been tempered, it's time to turn them into fully functional bolos by attaching handles to them. Additionally, gentlemen, three pinholes, a lanyard hole, and an acid etch on your blades. Good luck. Your two hours starts now. For the handle, I decided to go with a tan micarta material because it most closely matches the wood of the original, but the material is just tough as nails. I got to get a handle put on. Also, by flipping the blade upside down, I already can see that it's going to be much more manageable to grind this bolo profile out. Feeling pretty nervous right now. Got my pin handles drilled. I mean, I'm getting there. And it's somewhat shaped like the, like the bolo. <laughs> oh, get in there. I need to get this handle glued up, and then I need to get this knife sharpened. 
in Matt's mind, the whole thing is make a complete knife. If you have time, straighten it. But you don't want to end up with a straight knife that doesn't meet parameters. I had a big mess to start with, but by doing a hollow grind, I was able to get in where those welds weren't completed and basically able to blend the steel, and I was able to find where the welds are. Right now, I'm going to work on getting the handle finished up. These are chopping knives, so it's got to fit comfortably in the hand real well. OK, back to the blade. And then I need to put a final edge on it. As I'm shaping my handle, I realize I forgot to drill a lanyard hole in the micarta. I knew the hole was in the steel itself, and I remembered about where it was. Shot in the dark at the drill press. $50,000 is on the line here. I nailed it. Crisis averted. The tang, it's got a slight warp, and I have some pretty big gaps between the wood and the metal. I decide to clamp everything back together, apply some more glue, and then go ahead and just go back to the grinder, and I'm hoping for the best. Two minutes, Blade Smiths! There was only a couple minutes left. Etched, I forgot, etched. And it finally hit me that I'm supposed to etch this blade. So I knew I had to get over the ferric chloride and get it done. If I don't get this etched, it could be what sends me home. Five, four, three, two, one. Blade Smith, shut down your machines, drop your tools, stop what you're doing. This second round of competition is over. Good job. Blade Smith, welcome to the flight home at CHOP to test the strength and durability of your bolo blades, as well as the overall construction of your knives. I'm going to be bashing them into these flight helmets. Remember, I don't really care what happens to these brain buckets. It's what happens to your bolos that really counts. Mike, you're up first. You ready? Let's crack this nut. Well, Mike, the blade held up really well. And there's no evidence that this edge has seen a helmet. The one major issue I have is just the size of this handle. It's uh, a little narrow in this dimension for my hand, which makes it a little bit round and rolly. But all in all, it all held up really well to the test, so well done. Thank you. So, Matt, you see what we're up to. How are you feeling? A little nervous. <laughs> Well, Matt, your edge held up really well. It's still sharp. The, the big issue I have is the handle. All of the pins have come loose. The handle itself isn't really glued in place. Would have been worthwhile to take more time fixing this warp. But that aside, it all held together well. So good job. Thank you. Joe, you're up. How are you feeling? I'm as ready as I can be. Well, Joe, your blade here suffered chipping. Got a big sort of dime radius chip, and then the rest of it is all chipped as well. I think that when you were chasing this delamination, you ended up with an edge that's on the thinner side. Aside from your blade, the handle is a good size, good dimension. Um, I like the contouring, but uh, there's just no denying this chipping on the, the edge here. Yes, sir. This is the sugarcane slice. To test the sharpness of your weapon, I will cut across these sugar canes. Mike, you're up first. You ready for this? Absolutely. Let's do this. I'm just praying and hoping there's no problems. All right, Mike, your edge cut easily through this Sure came. It's light, it's fast, it's sharp, and most importantly, it will cut. Yes. All right, Matt, your turn, sir. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. First up, the handle. 
It's loosened a lot. There's a little crack and it's starting to open up where I can see it. But despite the severe warp that you have right here, your blade is strong, it's sharp, and most importantly, it will cut. Awesome. All right, Chief, you're next. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. I know my only chance of moving on at this point is my blade has to perform very well. All right, Chief, let's talk about your bolo here. Your edge. You have some missing pieces right here, but the edge is sharp enough to cut. It's wieldable. You have a good balance here because it's got a good handle to hold on to. More importantly, sir, it'll cut. Thank you. Airmen, the judges have completed their deliberation. It's time for one of you smiths to leave the forge. The bladesmith leaving the forge is. Joe, your blade didn't make the cut. Please surrender your blade. I'm disappointed in myself that I didn't do a better job in the first round and wasn't able to make the corrections that needed to be made. But I feel really good about the two Smiths moving forward representing the Air Force. I may not be a Forge and Fire champion, but I had the opportunity to come here and show some of my skills. I'm walking out with my head held high.